what happened is it migrated into someone's private pond, someone who wasn't leased, someone whose property didn't have a, it was just adjacent to the, the well pad. They actually it had high levels of barium and strontium, a lot of other um, iron, manganese, all sorts of things. But the DEP's solution was to leave the water in the pond and let the chemicals dissipate. They did that for two years, it didn't do anything, so then they drained the pond. Yeah, the Chesapeake argued about that also. Okay. Something that maybe you guys don't think about, but um, the loss of tourism. In Brevard County, we were known for our Amish community, as Lancaster once was. I remember visiting Lancaster and all the fields. Now I see you have a lot of concrete. Now they came to us, and I think they're leaving. Hunting. Where are the deer? Are they going to be there so you guys can come on up and hunt with us? The fall foliage. When the trees disappear, where, where is the fall foliage? And I remember, and I, as growing up, um, our rolling hills down in the farms, it's going. It's going very fast, faster than I ever imagined. So it does affect tourism. And when we go up to New York State and talk, they depend on the wineries. And can you imagine the the grapes soaking up that sap and going into your wine. Next picture. That's my arm. Um, my water changed March 2011. And the thing is, people don't understand, is it goes, it doesn't, it's not constant. It might happen once a month, twice a month. And, um, it is, it's right here, that's my arm, okay? I have two different types of rashes. And what we know is there's intestinal problems. There are those bleeds. Um, you get tired. And sometimes you have enlarged liver and enlarged spleen. And I think I wrote this down about my daughter so I don't cry. <laughs> it's kind of hard to go through. Um, my daughter, well in October, our water turned white for a whole week. And we don't drink our water, but we do have to bathe in it. And I still drink the milk from my cows, so I think I'm still getting chemicals in my body from that. But my daughter had a fever for three, three weeks. And then she had stabbing pain shooting all over her belly. And she lost 10 pounds in seven days. She had diarrhea, which turned to blood. And on some things, she asked me, she begged me, please take me to the hospital. So I did. And they tested her urine, tested her blood, and they found high white cell count in her urine, but not her blood. So they performed an MRI. And they found lots of fluid floating in her at lower abdomen. Her right ovary was enlarged. Her spleen and liver were enlarged. They treated her for a urinary tract infection. This hospital called on a Saturday and asked how she was doing. She was still having the pains in the diarrhea. On Monday, they called again. And they said, how is she doing? And I said, she still is in a lot of pain. And she still has diarrhea. They said, oh, by the way, she doesn't have urinary tract infection. My daughter left. She started looking for another job. She left the state. And she found a home. And she, by the ninth day coming home, she felt better. She didn't have diarrhea. She didn't have the stabbing pains. She stayed, she, uh, she came home, she cleaned up her business, and got rid of the job that she was doing, and um, took care of the bills that she had. And she left me December 26th. She lives in Tennessee. She feels a lot better. Um, you know, that's where it hurts. Your family leaves, your friends leave. We're a tight community. And I don't think it's fair. So, it, she's not the only one that had an enlarged liver and spleen. My neighbor, she also had contaminated water. And her liver and spleen were also enlarged. The hospital sent her home, and her spleen burst after three days. Okay? Just something to let you know what we're going through. Can I just think of this and just calm down a little bit? Come on. <laughs> uh, this is happening more and more. Yesterday, um, Carol and I went to do a document check down in, in uh, the DEP.
MVP, like she said. We had the opportunity to have the at guess, a well pad documentation to go through. I don't know if you are familiar with at guess, but at guess is the Leroy blowout. The blowout that happened in um, April 19th, 19th uh, 2011. Um, Carol and I at that time happened to be in a meeting in White Sox, and I got a phone call from my daughter who lives very close to the blowout. And she said, Carol, come help me, Mom. I don't know what to do. There's a blowout down the road, and there's all these people are all over the place. We went down there, and we can speak about that some other time, but we happened to find this piece of document that was in the ad gifts. And I'm, we haven't talked to the lady who this is, so I'm, even though the DEP gave us permission to copy this, I'm going to choose not to say her name until we have the opportunity to speak to her about this. But I want you to read the letter that was written to the, the DEP, Jim. Bill Cosmo received a phone message earlier from a Mrs. X who, who indicated she lived near the ad gas and was now sitting in the hospital with her son, who is very ill, and she was desperate to know if there was anything they should be testing for. Bill and Randy reviewed our sample results for her well and we called her back at the number she left in the hospital. According to our sample results from April 27th, the only parameter that was slightly elevated above the secondary maximum contaminant level was manganese. I believe 0.2 VS MCLs, uh, 0.05 MGLs. No other parameters were elevated over the MCLs. Her water had been tested for our typical drilling parameters, VOCs, so forth and so on. We shared this information with Mrs. X. We also shared with her some of the parameters were elevated in one of her neighbors as well who we do believe was impacted. Chlorides, bromides, TDSs, and barium, slightly elevated. Mrs. X was concerned that perhaps the condition of her water could have changed since we last sampled there. Chesapeake has been sampling this well weekly and has not notified us of any change. But we do not have the most recent data. Randy and Bill contacted Chesapeake for the most recent data goes on to say, and at the end it says, um, Miss, Mrs. X indicated they switched back to drinking their water after being provided the data and explanation by Chesapeake. She described her son's illnesses as diarrhea that started last Thursday. Thursday. She said they went camping over the weekend, drank a bottle of water, and the whole time he was fine. Came home and he started drinking the water again. Monday, severe vomiting, diarrhea, went to the hospital, dehydration. Eventually sent to Troy, to Geisinger and Danville. This is going on up there now. And this is our state agency helping these, or the lack of help. There's six of our cows that have rashes right now. Um, we are working with Cornell. Cornell has documented our cows prior, and our cows are very fleshy. They are reproducing very well right now. Um, but our water just did something funny about a week before her rash broke out. And so, you know, something's going on. And that's the impact to me. It's not the impact to the rows and bridges. It's impact to people. And is, is that money coming back to help us? No. Okay, next. This is what we want you guys to think about. This will affect you guys. What's the quality of the food that you take in? This is one of the trees that was on the Benoit Well site. You can see at the bottom there's a red, um, where the red sap is going up. That killed that tree. The bark just falls off. How do you know? If they didn't take the sap out of there, maybe they would serve it. And it went on. Wow. How about the beef products? I know of a farmer in uh, southwestern Pennsylvania. 80 beef cows died in one week. It was in February, a lot of snow last year. He burned them. He hurried up and got rid of the rest of the cows. Picture him as a big burly man crying because he said the gas company, our elected officials, said, that this will save the family farm. Because it's going, to, it's going to destroy me. Okay, those cows are gone. They went to the local market. How much 
contaminated food, can you take it in before it affects you? To add with, uh, with my aspect, I um, recently, it's become a concern to me because I'm an organic uh, producer. It should be concerned with everybody, but I am particularly concerned with the organic products in relation to um, people having to pay more for a, a, an organic product when they're not getting the quality that I think should be there, or at least the assurance that the quality is there. I've contacted Dean Foods, I've contacted Horizon, who I ship to, I've contacted PCO, who is my certifier, who recently put out a guideline for me to follow, not for them to help me, but for me to follow, where if I have a spill on my property or my water becomes contaminated, they will remove my license for three years at least. It's not her fault, it's the operator's fault. And that's why I want to ask people that may not be in, in the path of this, but you guys are going to be taking in our foods. It should not be the farmer that should be regulated. Yep. It should be the operator doing the operation affecting us. And that's what I want you guys to do, is contact your elected officials to tell them, get the regulation in, to know what to test for. You do not know what to test for. I don't know what to test for on my body. They don't have a clue. They don't know what to test my cows for or my milk. So, you know, get the regulations in, make the, make the operators pay for it. And the interesting thing to add to that is that with that new Act 13, um, the industry can tell your doctor, if you go to the doctor and you're sick, you're definitely sick, and you say, it's got to be related to my, the water I'm drinking, your doctor can contact the industry for the chemicals that you might have been exposed to. Your doctor cannot tell you what you have been exposed to, cannot divulge to you, because the industry said that is proprietary information. And they do not have to tell you what's in your body. So I can even go to another doctor if I say, I don't like the way you're treating me, I want to know what's wrong with me. That bill contains language that will not will prevent your doctor from giving you that 